Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll be learning about acromioclavicular joint injuries and its physiotherapy management. Now, as an introduction, in this diagram you can see here is the clavicle, this is the acromion process of the scapula, this is the coracoid process of the scapula, and here you can see the acromioclavicular joint. Now, the acromioclavicular joint is a diarthrodial joint, which means that it is a freely movable joint, also called a synovial joint. It has a fibrocartilaginous disc between the two bones, that is, between the acromion process and the clavicle. So, the acromioclavicular ligament provides horizontal stability and the coracoclavicular ligament provides vertical stability. Here is the acromioclavicular ligament and here is the coracoclavicular ligament. Now, there is trapezius muscle and the deltoid muscle, which provides dynamic stabilization to the joint. You can see the trapezius and deltoid muscle more clearly in this diagram. It provides dynamic stabilization to the joint. Moving to the functions of the acromioclavicular joint, it allows the scapula additional range of rotation through the thorax. The joint also allows the transmission of forces from the upper extremity to the clavicle bone. Moving on to the mechanism of injury, indirect force is due to fall on an outstretched hand or elbow. Direct force or blows to the shoulder as in a road traffic accident or assault or athletic events as you can see in this diagram or falling onto the point of the shoulder. So this is the mechanism of injury. Now looking at some of the clinical features, pain, swelling and difficulty in raising the arm up is one of the main features. Pain is often felt radiating to the neck and the deltoid region. Patient supports the affected shoulder, adducted and acromion will be depressed. That will be the usual patient presentation. On examination, there is tenderness and the lateral end of the clavicle is prominently felt. Now, there is a classification for acromioclavicular joint injuries, according to which there are six different grades. We look at each one of them. So, here is the acromion process. Here is the end of the clavicle and this is the coracoid process. So, under grade 1, the ligament that is involved is the acromioclavicular ligament that you see here. The clavicle is not displaced and the treatment is usually conservative. Looking at grade 2, the ligaments that are involved are the acromioclavicular ligament and also the coracoclavicular ligament. So here you can see that the acromioclavicular ligament is ruptured and there is a coracoclavicular sprain. So basically it's called as a subluxation. There is minimal clavicle displacement as you can see here and the treatment is usually conservative here as well. Looking at grade 3, the acromioclavicular ligament and the coracoclavicular ligament both are ruptured and there is elevation of the clavicle as you can see here and the usual treatment is conservative or surgery. Now looking at grade 4, there is acromioclavicular and coracoclavicular ligament rupture and the clavicle is posteriorly displaced and again for this it requires surgery. Looking at grade 5, there is again acromioclavicular and coracoclavicular ligament rupture and there is severe elevation of the clavicle as you see here and finally in grade 6, there is acromioclavicular and coracoclavicular ligament rupture and there is inferior displacement of the clavicle, both require surgery. The name of this classification is the Rockwood classification and this table gives a concise idea of what we just had a look at. Now looking at the diagnosis, acromioclavicular joint dislocation is often diagnosed via radiography. The grade 1 is not evident, it can be found out by the tenderness over acromioclavicular joint and also looking at the mechanism of injury. There is also a test which is called the resisted acromioclavicular joint extension test. So these are the methods used for diagnosis of acromioclavicular joint injury. Looking at the medical management, non-operative treatment is recommended for both grade 1 and grade 2 acromioclavicular joint separations. But for type 3, this is still much debated as we looked at earlier, as there is a high chance of early onset of degeneration within the joint. 
However, surgical intervention may be chosen as in certain cases uh, as this may yield better functional results, especially when the patient is younger, highly active or where a type 3 injury does not respond to conservative management. For type 4 and 5, surgical repair is highly recommended. Looking at the physio management, for uh, the conservative treatment for type 1 and type 2, that's grade 1 and 2 acromioclavicular joint injuries. In the acute phase, range of motion exercises are provided. It could be passive, act, pro, moving on to active assisted and then active range of movements of the shoulder. Basically, for the glenohumeral joint, that's the internal rotation movements, external rotation and flexion to tolerance. This should be within pain-free limits and gradually progress the patient. Exercises like scapular protraction, retraction, elevation and depression should be emphasized because they can be a more tendency for a more flex posture for the patient. Uh, stretches can be incorporated, that's the pectoralis minor stretch or pectoralis general uh, major stretches. Wall slides can be incorporated, push up on wall as tolerated as the patient progresses can be included. Now, in the very acute phase, before starting off with these exercises, the regular protocol of rest, ice, should be emphasized. Now, during the recovery phase, closed kinetic chain exercises like resisted low rows, scapular protraction like the punches here can be utilized. Bilateral and unilateral pole with trunk rotations like upper cuts can be used. Deltotrapezial complex work like exercises with cables, shoulder shrugs, shoulder abduction at various angles can be incorporated and then plyometric exercises like you can see here that's a medicine ball toss and catch tubing ply plyometric exercises sports specific exercises that is a two hand overhead side to side throw for the overhead athlete can also be incorporated so it depends upon what the client is doing and if he wants to return to a sports specific program I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of AC joint injuries and its physio management and other notes on anatomy, physiology and other health science subjects, visit my website www.angelinaisaac.com. The link is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.